what is the true essence of black girl magic? Each week, I sit down for a deep and meaningful conversation with some of Africa's most inspiring women and hear their stories of love, loss, and second chances. My name is Dawn Faith. Join me on this journey of discovery. Nandi Madida, born Nandi Goma, grew up in a stable and comfortable home together with her brother and sister. Raised by her parents who were both academics, Nandi was afforded the best opportunities any little girl could ever want. She has worked in the entertainment industry since the age of 14. Now almost 30, Nandi is a TV personality, actress and musician. Through discipline, tenacity and a never say die spirit, she has built a reputation across the African continent that is far spreading to the rest of the world. But beyond her rapid rise to fame, what has kept this star in the light is her firm grasp on her identity and a determination to celebrate all of her blackness head to toe. When many young women felt the pressure to relax their hair or sew in weeds, Nandi chose to embrace her natural hair and all its beautiful complexities. She has blazed a trail and helped black women everywhere to ask themselves critical questions about the love-hate relationship we have with ourselves. I rang her late one afternoon to speak about the possibility of being a guest on Deep and Meaningful. I wanted to find out how she was settling into her new role as a wife and mum and what it's really like being Nandi Matita. Just five minutes into our chat, it was as if we'd been girlfriends forever. An illustration of her authenticity of spirit and how she hasn't allowed the fame to go to her head. I knew then that I was in for a treat. This is my deep and meaningful conversation with Nandi Matita. I want to know what does womanhood mean to you and when do you realize that actually you're now a grown woman? You know, you're not mm. just a beautiful lady, you are actually a woman. Mm. What does womanhood mean to me? I think having an innate sense of self. Nice. Knowing who you are, being unapologetically yourself. Yeah. Um, and when did I discover that? Definitely when I became a mom, which was yeah. literally two seconds ago. Yeah. Eight months ago. Yeah. When I really felt I can own the word womanhood, woman, I am whole, yeah. I am this female nice. and complete somehow. Yeah. Uh, and it's strange that it only came then, but it, it just did. Not only does your body change, just, you know, psychologically, yeah. you, you change, you grow in a yeah. way you never knew you could. Yeah. And it's natural. Yeah. And then you just don't care You're about not the things. For once, yeah. I don't care if I have makeup or not. Wow. I'm okay to look crass. Yeah. Like, at the mall. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> yeah. To motherhood. Yeah. Um, so you also have a great self-esteem because you know it really matters. That's true. You get what I'm saying? It's so, true. Yeah. Do you think it varies very... Because I, I would have thought that mm. at a time when everyone was like, weave this, long hair that, mm. and then you came out and did your own thing. I would have thought at that point that Nandi mm. already had it together. Mm. I would have thought that Nandi, because it would have taken a lot of courage yeah. to get to that space. Yeah. Do you see then the difference between that Nandi and Shaka's mum? Absolutely, because I feel like almost that Nandi was on the journey of becoming a woman. Aha. You know, and there were great elements here and there, but Aha. holistically she it wasn't quite together. there. Because yes, she would be able to embrace who she was in terms of her skin, in terms of, let's say, natural hair. But yeah. she wouldn't be able to go to the mall looking absolutely okay. crazy. Okay. No, and then it, it, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm, I'm going there to get my kids whatever, food or whatever, food yeah. or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And there's a great sense of real, true confidence yeah. and esteem in that. So, yeah. I like that. I, I, li I, li I like that too because I, I, I always then joke about how long it takes to get ready when you're trying to go somewhere with a kid. And then you just get to a point where you're like, I'm awake, the child is alive, I'm alive. Yeah. let's go. Absolutely. And, that's, and that's where I am and, and that's incredible. You just, your world kind of changes. Like I said, your priorities uh, definitely shift, yeah. but definitely for the better. Yeah. Yeah. So life now, the concept of life means something else and something... I think more profound. Great. Yeah. What do you think you learned from your dad mm. being a mum to a black little boy who's going to grow up to be a black man? What do you think you've learned or you watched your dad do that mm. inspires you to 
raise a black dude? Mm. Sure. I think to be to be daring, as in to be so brave, um, in, in in knowing that he can reach his full potential fearlessly. And I say that because my dad is a rural boy mm. originally. Obviously, he's a man, but yeah. he's the guy That's from where he Makaya, comes from. Yeah. Today, Mapumulo, you wow. know? Yeah. And he became a doctor, made a name for himself. Yeah. You know, uh, worked in the UK, worked in America, came back. And when you think about it, I mean, I always go home to visit, to visit my grandparents mm. to think he's from the small this village. Absolutely. You have to have such a strong sense of just knowing that you know, like Lupita said, your dreams are valid. Just That's to know it. that you can, you can dare to be matter. yourself. You matter. Mm. Uh, you can reach your full potential. There are no boundaries. And mm. that, that's incredible. So mm. I know that already, in fact, Sunny Love, my dad as a grandfather now, a new grandfather, yeah. is trying to instill that in my son. Wow. Yes. Who has no issues with being brave. Yeah. It's actually very dangerous. I'm constantly yeah. like, as long it's as the okay, hospital's dad. around the corner. It's cool. Because yeah, yeah, you walk to the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. But it's absolutely yeah. great. Um, you know, because that's, that's the kind of son I want to raise. Yeah. Where he feels like he can conquer the world. And, that's and great. Do what about your mom? How, how, what have you learned in how she raised you and your sister? And how has that shaped... I know it's only been eight months, but mm. how has that shaped you into being the mom that you are? Mm. Oh, my... Uma, like my mom has... I like a, that, by the yes, way. Like, Uma. Yes, Forget mom. Like, yeah. Uma. You know? Because yeah. that's how, obviously, we know her. Yeah. Um, she, her love, there is just abundance in love and nurturing. Yeah. It's like, she's full, she's warm. Yeah. So even now, like I was saying, these two months that I kind of took a break because I wanted to. Yeah. Uh, we were at her house a lot. Of course, we have our own home, but I mean, mm. we'd go visit there. And there was always food. Nice. You know, uh, and even should make like the baby solids and, but it's warm and even yeah. like my son feels like, oh, oh this lady. Just like, oh. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's just that love and, nice. and, and the sense of being a great nurturer. Nice. I hope he also learns from that and also the way he treats females. Yeah. Um, you know, to, to treat them in a delicate manner yeah. and to love and nurture them. Mm. Yeah. Because I was, I was going to ask, um, mm. I asked to Brenda, um, if there's a sense of responsibility with raising a black man, mm. do you feel like in the world, you know, and, and globally, I think, mm. with the challenges that typically b black people generally, but specifically black, black men, men yeah. are going through, do you, do you feel, do you, yeah, what kind of responsibility and what kind of pressure does that place on you mm. um, to, to raise him for his own self-awareness, but also what he puts out into the world? Mm. Sure. Um, you know, I must. I mean, it's a tricky question, but it's so funny. It actually reminds me of a story. Um, well, you know the hashtag men are trash? Yes. So uh, there was a bit of backlash, but not really. Mm. When I said not all men are trash, I got the reason why the hashtag was there. Yeah. I get it, yeah. you know, obviously, and, and it, it, it needed to be there, of course. Yeah. People were angry. I mean, what a horrible thing. And, and, yeah. and females being victims of something yeah. that happens a lot in South Africa. Yeah. But why it was so important for me to say this is the responsibility almost as a mother, but not only as a mother, as a human being, to yeah. say not all of our men are trash. Yeah. whatever race group of course but especially black men yeah. alone because in society there have been these structures for black females to hate black men mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. and for them of course to because it's been chaotic structures for them to almost feed the stereotype yeah. to do you know, them which then validates well, well that's why no wonder but yeah. now within all of that comes the fact that a lot of men or black men feel demotivated who are good men okay. so I refuse to almost like support the stereotype that men are trash Okay. Because then I'm insulting my dad, then I'm insulting my son, then I'm insulting my uncle, then I'm your insulting husband, the crew over here that brother. have been great, my husband, my brother. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you get what I'm saying? Who have all been wonderful men in my life. And yeah. then, of course, they've been horrible men. Yeah. The same way they've been horrible human beings. I'm not a horrible woman, too. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and I always say, I doubt the creator sees us that way as female or male, he sees mm. us as human beings and his yeah. children. Yeah. And he knows the good children and the bad one. And trust yeah. me, it's not just one sex. Uh, otherwise, life would be a lot easier if you just <laughs> avoid, you know, men altogether. I'd actually, be I done. wouldn't mind if yeah. yeah. be done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What an yeah. easy way to live life. And it's, that's not the truth. Coming up, Nandi talks about the awe of bringing a child to this world. Sure, like giving birth is something so crazy. It's next level. Yeah. It's like, 
an actual human being who smiles, laughs, blinks. I did that. I'm superwoman. Don't tell me Don't call nothing. My name. <laughs> Don't nah, say my name. No. No. Done. No. Yeah. What's your superpower? Well, now, having given birth to like a human being, now yeah. is definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I cooked a human. What, yeah. did, what did, did you do? You know what yeah. Like, seeing, sure, like giving birth is something so crazy. It's next level. Yeah. It's like an actual human being was in your smiles, body. Smiles, laughs, blinks, yeah. sneezes. Yeah. Like, He's going to have his own kids. I did that. Was in your body. Ah, I'm superwoman. Don't tell me. <laughs> don't call nothing. my name. <laughs> don't yeah, say my name. No. no Done. No. Yeah. And I don't need to do any more, actually. Now, yeah, Papa. That's yeah. Exactly. Um, you're showing off. You're right. No, I'm superwoman. Yeah, you're showing off. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, now I'm really showing off. Like, <laughs> that's, did that you enjoy being huge. pregnant? No. I'll tell you what. <laughs> that was, that was no, quick. Was you didn't even need to think about yeah. it. Yeah. First six months, were, you know, you're so cute and oh, you're bumping. You know, oh, oh, it's oh, lovely. Glowing. Take a photo. That last trimester, guys, is very <laughs> kissing. Yeah. When it's hot, it's hot. And yeah. my, my little one was born late November, so summer had summer. kicked in. Yeah. It's just not sexy. Like, and it's so funny how people talk about a glow. It's not a glow, it's sweating. You're sweating. <laughs> <laughs> and the result of that, it looks like a glow. They like. I was waiting for this glow. It never came, like, no, darling. You were just wiping the sweat. No, it was the sweat. It's not glow. No. <laughs> no. No. If, I, if there was a way to almost, I don't know, have a surrogate or... No. I, I like, thought about pregnant, that. Yeah. <laughs> Pregnancy, yeah. the first six months, you just... Because you need and there's like a yeah. cute bump and it's like... And ah, it's I'm manageable, ne? It's all manageable. And then yeah. that last trimester, and my son is really big. <laughs> he's like his father. He's, yeah. He's tall. So... Like, ah, that in my stomach as a small <laughs> person. Just, was not like, happening. What? Yeah. Oh. But I mean, it was a healthy pregnancy, but, uh, yeah. But it was, it's a lot, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a lot. When tricky, sh- again, tricky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I know I used to, I used to say for myself as well, if I can fast track, I think I was good mm. till like month seven. Yes, it's always, you see, six, seven, mm. it's around there. And then I was like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, this is unnecessary. No. Eight nine is unnecessary. It's almost like it's more than half a year. Like, <laughs> yeah. We've been doing this for yeah, a while. Can, sure. can we? Yeah. Like so what's next? That's the feeling. <laughs> like, what's next? So no. No, I d- I didn't at the both mm. times. Mm. Both times I was just like no. Mm. It's not safe. I'm, I'm grateful that Please. I get to do it because I know a lot of women Absolutely. wish for it and want it. No. So thank God that yeah. I could do it naturally. But, it's not but no, nothing no. about this is fun. Your son, Shaga, is it a lot of pressure to raise Shaga? I wouldn't say pressure, no. Uh, He may feel the pressure, uh, you know, um, and I hope he doesn't. Yeah. Um, But I hope not, not from our side, or at least not from me, because I know I'll I'll make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. But I hope he also doesn't feel the pressure to, I just want him to be himself. Yeah. What are your greatest hopes for him? Just to find his own dream yeah. and to excel, but also just to be strong enough to know that kindness wins. You know, like, I just don't want him like to make it. And, and I don't want him to make life so complex. You know, I want him to try and simplify even mm. the most complicated situations. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? To yeah. know that no one can almost mess with his spirit, no. his esteem, yeah. you know. And just to know, like, for example, the biggest thing for me is, like, Hurts people, hurt people. So he'll know if he gets bullied or someone says something, mm. because that's going to happen. Yeah. You know, the no, man, I know you people, sure. you've got issues. Yeah, You're right, it's man. Fine. I won't, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Deal with your stuff. Absolutely. For him just to live life yeah. on that path and, and, and be that excited about life and, and positive. Yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. Well, in the same light of everything we're talking yeah. about, heaven forbid anything happens to you mm. right now. Mm. And God says you have a day and somehow your son all of a sudden becomes 16 and wise enough to understand that you're going to be gone in a day mm. what's the one thing you would want him to know before you go home listen and love God boom that's it wow I like that yeah that's really good yeah what do you think no let me not <laughs> 
I like that. Because that's actually the saddest question of the day. I know. Without like tearing up. Don't ruin my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it together, yeah, yeah. love. Keep it together. Listen yeah. and love God. Because mm. not, nothing else matters, yeah? Nothing else matters, yeah. Do you think you would be a good mother-in-law or you will be a horrific do you know why I think I'm going to be a good mother-in-law? Because I really can't wait until he's 18, which is a strange thing. People are like, what do you mean? You've been eight months year old. Yes. I honestly, I'm going to do my absolute best, but I can't wait for the day that my husband and I are like, our kids are grown. <laughs> he's eight months. And they're out of here. <laughs> yeah, but I still can't yes, wait. No, because yes. eight months is already a lot. <laughs> you need your space yeah, back. No. <laughs> so already 18, I'm like, I yes. can't wait for college. Yes. I will be applying yes. everywhere. On his behalf. And out, out, of the country. Country. <laughs> out of the country. Out of the country. In a different yeah. place. Yeah. Continent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. But he shows up with like a whack woman. I and he's not. like, And he's like, mom. But you know what's the most important thing? I was telling my mom this. Is that our kids are born through us, but they're not ours. Amen. They're God's. Yeah. So as long as you have that, I mean, obviously it's, you don't wish that upon your kids. But yeah. There's nothing you can actually do. You have no control of their lives, and you just hope that it turns out well. Yeah. I have a feeling like when it happens, ne, you'll mm. be calling, going, um, so can we have a caucus meeting? No, can we have a caucus meeting? But can I tell and you say, what can we do about this situation? <laughs> yeah, like, no, you know about that interview. Yeah. To be quite honest. <laughs> No, but I'll tell you why. It's yeah. so funny. I always tell my husband this. My ex, yeah. um, you know, he's, yeah, his mom wasn't the greatest. <laughs> and I learned from her that, like, I will mm -mm, never I'm not be, like that. be that mother-in-law. Yeah. I'm not going to be like yeah. that. It is. It is. Um, it's tricky. I'm not sure we can really talk about mother-in-laws without getting in trouble. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, if I can, because we moms, yeah. mothers, they, they're not yours. They Honestly, they're going to get married. Yes. They're going to love someone. Deal. You obviously pre Deal, actually. <laughs> I think, Deal. I think, though, like, I think I'm going to be a great mom. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that was not convincing. God, <laughs> she couldn't even say it. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I hope, mm, I hope I'm nah. going to be a great mother-in-law. Mm. My trick right now, yes. put it this way, mm. the honest truth, yes. I'm not going to go out to torture any young girl. That's yes. not fair and that's inhuman Absolutely. and it's unnecessary and, and it causes a lot of necessary. friction in your family. Thank you. On that note, where does your sense of self come from? I'll be very honest. I'd love to be like, you know, I just have any nice sense of self. I just feel it's all me. I mean, I was born. I just, I don't know, <laughs> something in me. He came with a wand. <laughs> it's just incredible, I know. But um, I was raised in a great family, especially like, like my mom for self-esteem. Yeah. My mom was like, you know, you guys, you must embrace a natural hair. It's who you, you know, are. You know, that's who you are. This <laughs> thing, you must just know you are, you are, you are so beautiful. good. Yeah, yeah. So we grew up in a family which is like, you know, be unashamedly you, love yourself. Nice. So she literally made sure Just that feed. we were, fe mm. she was feeding uh, our nice. self-esteem, you know, and making sure we have good esteem and my, my, my a good sense of self and our, and our themes are good. And, and my dad also was the same, but he was more the one making sure that we just knew we could conquer anything. I like that. And, 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 and almost made sure that we were always constantly ambitious. So I'd like to say it's all me. I was but born this way. Family. I woke up like this. No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. And always a work in progress. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. Coming up, Nandi talks about the impact of losing someone she loved. And so seeing this human being that I love so much deteriorate in front of my eyes, who was so bright, yeah. great, and then eventually die, really, yeah. that really hurt me and almost messed up my mind. Loss shows up in our lives in different ways, but the impacts are similar for all of us, regardless of gender, race, or wealth. In my experience, grief is messy, confusing, and just straight up crazy. The journey of grieving can be even more challenging for children or young people who endure the death of a loved one. During our conversation, Nandi shared candidly about her experience of loss and the lasting impact it's had on her life. What are the things in life that you think are inevitable? Like um, love, right? Yeah. Um, and, like and you can say what you're gonna say, but this, this is inevitable. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it comes from your family. Yeah. 
least a friend, yeah. Nana, yeah, you know, or um, if not a friend, um, then God, yeah, which that love never stops, it yeah, never starts, it stops, yeah, love, love is inevitable, absolutely. So, why do you think so many people don't feel they experience love if it's so inevitable? Because I feel like you know, the mind, I always say, like. You know, the devil has a great way of messing up with your mind. Yeah. So you can think you're not loved. And unfortunately, some people only realize they're loved when they're literally being buried. And they don't necessarily realize it, but you see well, how many people come. Yeah, absolutely. To, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, because they were loved. Yeah. Um, the brain has a great way of lying to you. Yeah. Um, and I always say that's the devil's voice. But yeah. everyone is loved by someone. I like that. Yeah. And then more importantly, if you really feel no one, then you're goddess. And that's the truth. And that's the most important love, actually. Yeah. I like that you speak a lot about God. You mm. are a woman of faith, clearly. Yes. But I'm not like, I don't go to church every Sunday. <laughs> like, I'm not. I'm and not like ADHD. Just, you know I'm, what I mean? Yeah. I can't sit and pay attention And God knows. Long. I can't check God. Like, yeah. He knows I wasn't listening. Yeah. That whole... Just because you, you kept yeah. the roster. Like, yeah, present. <laughs> yeah, in this one. <laughs> what kind of relationship do you all have? Very natural, honest relationship where times I'm like, oh, God. What's this? Yeah, what's, what's going this? on? No, I did this. I did... And then... Ganti. Yeah, why? Very candid relationship. Yeah. Um, Like, my God and I fight. Not necessarily God fighting with me, no, but no, I definitely but care. <laughs> I feel it's you. It's one way. Yeah. Um, again, and I always believe that God must be in your heart yeah. more than anything. So yeah. um, I am the, I must be honest, that's also another thing about becoming a mother. I was like, I do need to introduce God, of course, to my kid in a way that that I was where initially I used to go to church all the time to understand yeah. the yeah. concepts of God and yeah. then he can choose, of course, Whether you are how in he wants to do it. Yeah, mm. and, and then celebrate God. But, the, yeah, definitely. I, I, I love God. I, I, I don't know. It. God is everything. Yeah. I love I like I like how it also it's just constantly coming up naturally mm. to you. Well mm. it's not a byproduct. Yes. It's also not a forced thing. It is just a part of the true essence yeah. of everything that's working around. How has loss showed up in your life? Loss. Yeah. And how did you mm. cope, mm. deal mm. and get to a point where you can handle loss i'll be very honest i and i guess i've been fortunate i haven't lost a lot of people you mm. know in my family and i mm -hmm. say that i've been very fortunate because i have mm. um you know i just think of but the, the one person who always sticks to my mind and it's the strangest thing is my cousin uh, mm -hmm. I think because he, he passed on so so young at 27, and this and I never hide it. But this was at the height of HIV AIDS, mm -hmm. which in case it in because mm -hmm. we were like number one in the world. No, we've lived those stats absolutely, yeah. and and so I just saw this bright mind going somewhere, doing mm -hmm. great things. Obviously, then uh, living with the disease, and 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 at that time there was no medication per yeah. se, or at least it was being I don't know, it wasn't accessible mm -hmm. to everyone. Mm -hmm. And so, so seeing this human being that I love so much deteriorates in front of my eyes who was so bright, yeah. great, and then eventually die. Really, mm. that really hurt me and almost messed up my mind. And, and it's even the fact why I actually, from that day onwards, I knew that in a way we almost, and I'm not being political, cannot yeah. depend on government because at the time it was yeah. a huge thing. I know because my dad was a doctor. We yeah. didn't think... Give the medication. Give us the medication. No matter what you yeah. say, we get that. We get yeah. your logic. But people are dying. Uh, they need the and medication. And if you remember that area, uh, you would see people mm. like at drop in in mm. Durban, and you'd like, in town, mm. literally looking skeletal, yeah, well, in pain. It was mm. such a dark time, yeah, sure, for yeah. a lot of families. Yeah. So that for me, and maybe it's because of that, just the trauma of seeing someone so yeah. young yeah. Uh, die at such a painful death. It's awful, isn't it? Absolutely, because I've had my grandfather pass on yeah. from pancreatic cancer, but he was old enough. He had his grandchildren. We yeah. all did what I'm saying. So yeah. he lived a you full life. That. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It was almost like it's his time. But yeah. to see my, almost my cousin being robbed, yeah. It, it, well, at least that's how I saw it of yeah. life, you yeah. know, that almost, it almost, almost traumatized me. Do you think you've experienced any loss in your work and in your career and in your path and any setbacks that have mm. forced you to revisit why 
you want to do what you want to do or even potentially just throw in the towel? Yes, um, that was my next one. Yeah. Um, definitely. But also it was needed. Uh, or even now, mm. uh, you know, till this day, and it's, it still happens. Um, but you never understand why such things happen. Like yeah. I, always, I always say the story about me being run up for life yes. and for our actors. Yes. Because yeah, I want people that. to know, yeah. you know, that yeah. it, it, it happens to everyone. Yeah. For me, it was a bit dramatic because it happened in front of thousands of people. <laughs> yeah. Hello, I'm yeah, failing. That, nice. that one was unnecessary. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank but yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It, 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 I guess it was part of my story. And then yeah. to see that I still eventually made you, you it. You landed on your feet. If you get what I'm saying? That yeah. it, it's still possible. But to also be honest, it still happens. I mean, just I think a month ago, I was offered something and it went to someone else. and okay. But then I got something else. And yeah. then, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's... it's, it's the nature of the game, uh, yeah. not only this industry, just in general. In life, But yeah. it's always tricky, but it just gets easier where, it's funny, my reaction now is, okay, well then it wasn't for it me. It wasn't for me. Which is, you know. That, that, that's living a, a surrendered life, which I think is hard for most people. Mm. The idea to accept the negative things that oh, happen. Yes. And, and it's hard to say it wasn't for me when you were banking on buying that new car. With that wasn't for me, or no, you that think, house you think with it wasn't for me. Not by, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not by yeah, choice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. It's a, yeah, I know that it, it, it takes a lot of maturity. I think sometimes people forget what you see now mm. has been years mm. of work, you know, mm. years of preparation, years of failure. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then sure. going, okay. okay, hang on a second. I failed there yeah, in the human people space, but mm. I learned so much because mm. when I get up and I do it again, mm. do you know what I mean? And, and, and for me, I think that's the thing for me. I'm always like, I think I'm always willing to learn mm. and accept my failures because when I reflect back, I'm so grateful for them mm. because it's just like, well, if that didn't happen, then, then oh my God, I mean, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, if, even, even to the point, I speak a lot now with the loss of my kid. Mm. Actually, say I'm grateful my daughter died and people think you're so heartless. What kind of mom mm. would say that? And mm. I'm like, well, do you know the woman I am now? Mm. Honey boo boo. Now that's profound. She needed With an angel too. She mm. needed to go through that. Like I needed mm. that as my birthing canal to actually make me, me, Be- because right. Because it's when you see stuff. It's when you can mm. deal through stuff. You know, like I always say now, oh, I trip and my heel breaks. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, at this stage of the game, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I lived through grief. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And okay, then that deal doesn't come in the time that I'm waiting for it to mm. come in. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, is that, is that your best punch? Mm. Yeah. Like, because I've, yeah, I've survived worse. Bring it. That's so true. Do you know what I mean? Bring mm. it, yeah. And I think that it builds resilience in my life and mm. in my spirit mm. and it builds my level of trust. And for mm. me, the, but the biggest thing about my faith is I don't act like it all the time. But girl, I trust God. Mm. And that, and you know, that's tricky. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because like you, you're in circumstances where now to trust God in certain it's very tricky. But if, but if he's brought you this from one. somewhere, yeah. you know, like, like at, in the moment, ne, mm-hmm. I'm always like, ha, like, hello, <laughs> do you need help? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, Next. Let me know, less time, I'm there. Yeah. I'll hook you up. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And then I remember, though, that, you know, I just, have, I, me, I just have to do this. Mm. And, and then go, oh, yeah, yeah, no, you got this. Mm. You know, yeah. And that comes to living life, though, and having gone through all those losses. You know, otherwise you would have never been able, like you said, to find that resilience. Yes. And that's what I also find, yeah. Coming up. Nandi talks about redating her husband again. We've become so unromantic that we've had to like be learning it again. Nice. But it's more honest and, and sure, last night was funny. Oh, like nice. it was like just laughing at yourselves about what yeah, we were like, yeah. It was so easy, but it was so like so cool and like, you know, I think you're hot. <laughs> and now it's like Yeah, um, yeah okay. You and Zakel, yes. how do you guys keep the fires burning, being so busy and having so much work and yeah. working together and then sometimes working separately? How do you separate work from the love 
between the two of you. Sure. And I know the marriage is still young, but how are you keeping the romance alive with yeah. the baby? Because sometimes people then struggle to find that balance of, okay, we're looking after the baby, yeah. and then there's work, and then there's still me and you. Quite honestly, and you, it's so funny, your timing is crazy yeah. with these questions. Yeah. We literally started date night again yesterday. Nice. Yeah, so that's, you know... And but it was so funny. Why well, I'm laughing? Because before it was so easy. Like before, baby would have been, yeah, you know. Let's and, just go hang. You know, yeah. and um, and now it's like so it's almost like dating for the first time again. It's like yeah. so we sat there, <laughs> and it was like, okay, what are we gonna say? Because <laughs> <laughs> we try to avoid work. Yeah. And we also try to avoid the like, baby. Baby talk. We try, and so it was. Mm, mm, so it was for like the yeah like. Yeah. So. Hmm. Not okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> we like yeah. we become so unromantic that we've had to like relearn how to be romantic again, which apparently yeah. obviously is natural to have yes, baby definitely. and whatever. And yeah. also I think also during pregnancy because I'm yeah. not pregnant like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um we learning it again. Nice. But it's more honest and and sure, last night was funny. Oh like, nice. was like just laughing at yourselves about yeah, what are we doing? Like, yeah. It was so easy, but it was so like so cool. And, like you know, I think you're hot. And, <laughs> and now it's like, yeah, um, yeah, ish. okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, um, yeah, yeah, hey, I like cheesecake. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was, it was really, and then of course, like after yeah. an hour or so, it, it picked yeah, up slowly. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's the truth. So. Uh, the fire hasn't been burning. Yeah. But then, <laughs> You're putting maybe, the coal back in. You're putting the coal back in, and it's it's yeah, it's being ignited that's slowly but surely. And I, you, I like to be honest, yeah. Oh no, that's yeah. good. Yeah. What do you love most about him? His heart. I always say that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. Ew, he's a typical luxury boy. Yeah. Okay, chaotic. <laughs> oh, I yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. chaotic. Yeah. And he always says, I mean, he comes from chaos. Again, yeah. he also is in a situation where it was mostly his mom who, you know, he was around and whatever. And because of that, he's made a lot of mistakes in his yeah, life. and figuring out, yeah. Absolutely. So for, for me, so I don't, I don't come from necessarily a chaotic background. Yeah. Of course, it's not perfect. But yeah, I think like, but, yeah, okay, like, nice. so, yeah, like, just don't make sense. And yeah. so, slowly but surely, he's, like, learning these things. Yeah. But what I love most, uh, it's his heart he's a, yeah. he's a good person he's a good guy isn't he and I think that's the most important thing the rest mm. we'll like Figure work on and build and yeah. you know slowly but surely yeah. but yeah his heart he's got a great heart that's beautiful mm. that's lovely yeah. hmm getting old yes 30 mm. is around the corner are you freaking out dirty 30 <laughs> um <laughs> you know it's strange now that I'm a mother no I don't know why. It's the strangest thing because I, I don't want to be too young. Mm. Like, I don't want to be cool for my son. But I don't want to lose myself. Like, yeah. I don't want to be cool. But I, I want him to know there's an age gap. And yeah. like, yeah. When I need to call him, like, yeah. <laughs> I was born in yeah, 1988. And it must be a big deal. Yeah, it must be a big deal. So for that reason, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Um, and then I guess uh, when I was younger, mm. like when I was so funny, when I was like, young, I was like about 21, I needed mm. to be a millionaire, yeah. 25, I was a billionaire. These are the goals. 30, you know, like, yeah. you know how you put crazy goals, yeah. and then you figure out that life is not about that. You can't put a time on everything, you know what I'm saying? Scarcely ever works out the way. And we're fortunate that we in an era where not only because of social media and television mm. and just the way we communicate, we are seeing so many people do amazing things. You know, um, later on yeah. in their lives, yeah. you know, like George Clooney has made 50s amazing. Yeah. It looks so, so hot. So sexy. Dude. Hallelujah. I mean, do you get what I'm Lord saying? Oh my soul. <laughs> I'm like, I want to be 50. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, or an Oprah, how she's so comfortable in her skin being 60. Yeah. You know, where you're just like, I want to be, I want to have my farm like Oprah. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, but you Grow know, you have to be grown. And yeah. the way she speaks, her wisdom, mm-hmm. and you almost like, Envious in a, in a good and a positive way, mm. where you're just like, I want to be so comfortable with my skin. That I could be at that age. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because yeah. you're seeing it in her. So we're fortunate where we have examples of people who have shown that no matter what age you get to, if you do it right and embrace it, mm. it's, it's a beautiful thing. It works thing. for you. Would you, speaking of beauty and aging, would you ever go under the knife or under the needle? Um, you know, funny enough, if I was in an accident, yeah. And I had to, or there's some damage done. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, but not cosmetically, no. 
serious, which is tough. Um, you know, it's so funny. I have nothing against it either, though. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But yes. I don't know. I, I, I try to work on my confidence as much as I can. Mm. I have nothing against what someone doing, so do you mm. get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but I, I always try to feel like if you can work around it and embrace just the way your you are. scars and, you know, and, and how you are, and yeah. it's tough. But yeah, and I'll tell you why I'm very like <laughs> hesitant because yeah. before pregnancy, I was like, no, I'm never, never. surgery. Why? <laughs> No, I because things change. Girl. So now it's funny, now I'm less judgmental. <laughs> I mean I don't be, I, I I still believe like you need to build on your esteem, but it's funny how it's not as easy to be like Okay, next question. Pregnancy is real on no, the body. It, That's why you need to be mentally prepared for it. Yeah. And I, I, I agree with mm. you. It, it, is, it is about keeping your options yeah. open. I, I joke a lot about, you know, guys go through midlife crisis <laughs> and they get the Ferraris yes, yes. and the whatever. Yeah. Mm, I want to get me some new gold. <laughs> yeah. that's, my, that's my midlife crisis. But it, this is moment. how I was in justifying it. It's so funny. And it's so funny because I've never thought this way at all. But yeah. I was like, no, my justification, you know how you justify this. You're like, no, but I'm just going back to how I was. Not I'm not there. No, 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 never. Like no, this. no. He has the picture. Yeah, <laughs> here's the evidence. So it's I'm still just, me. Yeah, I'm just putting a break. Replacement. It's, it's like, you know, the car, yeah. the tires get old. Yeah, I'm not going then to you go, bu- no, yeah, you go buy new tires. Insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're dangerous. You know, it was a good example. <laughs> How important is, because you're pretty, like that's not news oh, to you. Thank you. No, please. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Stop it. You know you're pretty, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Y- yes. You have to understand it's in my skin. So I know yes, people but you've find looked, me well, pretty. Yes, but, but you've looked, look, 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 but you've look. looked at yourself in the, mir- in the mirror. Yes. And then you go, <clears throat> yes. hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> you've You've had hallelujah moments. That's yes. not the question. I need you to accept yes. that yes. so that okay. I can ask you yes. the question. Okay, go for it. I like good? this. Okay, yeah. We're good. Yes, go on. Focus. So my question is, yes. how important mm. has that been for you? And have you had to consciously take it out of your head so that it, it, it didn't become... I'm Nandi and I'm beautiful. Mm. Now that's a especially that's a, in the media and in the space that you that worked is in. So shallow and obsessed yeah. with aesthetics. Yeah. Sure. Um, you know that that's something that my mom. You know, my mom used to always say, "Yeah, okay, you you guys have looks." <laughs> I love your pink, mom, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't even met her. No, my sister is gorgeous. My mom is also. Yeah. You know, she's to model, so. Yeah. And my sister too, but it's funny. She said, "Yeah, okay, be obsessed with your looks. Then you get in a car accident, and, and then, then what do you have to offer? Wow, go there and show off. Uh-huh. And if you have nothing else to like show it's for, the end. that's it. Yeah. And no one can. You don't know that like five minutes from now, I won't be What's in an accident. Happen? And, and yeah. it's the only thing people remember me by are my looks. And I had nothing else to offer. Yeah. Well, then we have a problem. So I remember my mom saying that. So, of course, appreciate what you've been given. Yeah. But also at the same time, you know, be aware of that. And then also, you know, it's funny. A lot of people who are seen as aesthetically appealing or whatever mm-hmm. uh, also struggle with sometimes having authentic relationships. So you don't know if a guy's into you. Because Like, Dave was very upfront. Yeah. He was like, no. I like you because you were very pretty. Oh, I was like, hey, Moshe, oh, Moshe, oh. Yeah, my love shit, yes. You know, you're like, hey, 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 you're a barber. You know, but then he's like, your character was the thing that really drew you. Rose above your beauty. It was like, sure, no, this is an awesome human There's more to you than the skin. But it becomes very tricky then to filter. That's what Ndawaza was saying earlier, Mm. that for her, having been so gifted and talented from when she was young, Mm. it was really hard whether people wanted to be with her because... As, yeah. a, as a person, yes, you know, they also found words, or was like, oh, I'm with the girls, yes. and so therefore it's like a, a big Absolutely. deal, and being able to find friends who saw you beyond just the physical part. And it's a constant, almost, 
struggle to, mm. to find that. So I found myself having a small group of friends, mm. very small, mm. um, to find, to have that authenticity. And it's just real. Yeah. No, we are so imperfect. We are so, I mean, guys, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that, and that's the absolute truth. Yeah. I love him for his heart. Yeah. But sure, I mean, just yesterday we were talking about like, how oh, funny we start to understand each other. I mean, we went from... <laughs> like, we finally yeah, started like, to understand yeah. each other. No, really. And it takes years to like... Yeah. And, and I mean, you know that you've been in a 10-year marriage. Yeah. And like, you go to therapy to understand yeah. each other. Yeah. You have to put in the work. And then you go back after and you've you go, been... Yes. Because yep. you think you're fine. And That's then you're like, no, us. wait. Yeah, because we went there instead of like... No, oh. no, but the doctor said... And then he's yes. like, no, but he said, like, okay, no, we have to go back and <laughs> ask him what he said. You don't really like, oh, I've got this whole relationship. You feel each other and then you don't go. You know nothing. Even though your therapist says, no, you should Continuously going, yeah. you're like, no, this one just wants money. Yeah. <laughs> then you realize it's yeah, not. No, you're like, no, we need to go no, back. No, yeah. That's our relationship. So if that goes, guys, yeah. go for it. I go. Meet <laughs> <laughs> yourself. To me, it's work. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a lot. Relationships of work. are work, though, right? Yeah. 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 Appreciate your honesty. Thank you. It's. It's, Appreciate the show. It's blooming refreshing. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Th- those are the goals. Yes. <laughs> The, the be honest with yourself, yeah. be honest with others, because yes. that's the only way we grow and we learn mm. from one another. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we're going to end it here. Thank you so much. Thank you. This has been amazing. Right. You know? It's been said that those who improve with age embrace the power of personal growth and begin to replace youth with wisdom, innocence with understanding, and lack of purpose with self-actualization. This is certainly true for Mrs. Madita. Nandi, you are everything I expected and more, babe. Thanks for the laughter, the wisdom, and the newfound friendship. That's it for today, folks. Join me again next week for another deep and meaningful conversation. Stay blessed.